Good afternoon and welcome to episode 738. And today's topic is about understanding each other and agreements, literally, or excuse me, explicitly, that's a better word. How do we make agreements when we don't understand each other? And this ties into yesterday's broadcast, which I'll talk about in a moment. So before I jump into the whole mosh pit of understanding, <laughs> let me explain. Let me start with who I am and what I'm about that explains everything. We'll see. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and relationship attraction expert, helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which is what informs my work and also started these talks called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart over two, two and a half years ago now. So now I do them daily, actually I have for a while now, and this series of talks called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart, but abbreviated so they can fit in the title, um, are topics that help people with relationships. Whether you're a man or woman, gay or straight, a lot of times the topics are universal and sometimes they're very specific. Today's is kind of more universal with some specific pieces in it, just to blend everything together. So yesterday, episode 737, I talked about how we can never understand each other. And I talked about three different levels where we don't understand each other. And I invite you to go watch that recording. In fact, I'll put the link in the comments afterwards so you can find it because that will help you understand the premise for this talk. But I'll still want to make sure you get an understanding from this one as well. So the conversation today is about how do we make agreements when we don't understand each other? And I don't mean this literally, like, you know, I don't understand what you're saying. I'm talking about the fact that we think we understand each other and they make massive assumptions and not good ones. So this should be helpful and maybe entertaining. We'll see. I'm not sure how I'll go about this because I didn't have a plan beyond the title. But let me do a quick Cliff Notes thumbnail sketch of yesterday's broadcast for those of you who didn't see it yesterday. I spoke about how our agreements, sorry, how our understanding of each other is amazing to actually happen based on the fact that we as men and women, particularly, are very different species. You know, Mar I mean, John Gray talks about Mars and Venus. In some ways, we're very different. And I referenced Mark Gunga's work, and he's a minister back east. And he had a series of videos, and you find them on YouTube, called A Tale of Two Brains, which is a recording of a live event he's run with his um, congregation. And in it, he talks about how the male brain and female brain are very different and how we think differently and remember differently. And how, as men, we can mentalize everything. Little boxes that don't touch and all separate stuff. And I'm going to give you a very brief explanation because I went way deeper yesterday. So again, link will be in the comments. Women, on the other hand, everything in their brains is all wired together. One long continuous string, so to speak. So the way women understand things is very connected and interwoven. For men, the way we understand things is very separated and distinct, which can make for some confusing communications. Beyond that, I've talked about love languages and also about upbringing as well. But in this context, this is more to do with that different way of thinking. Because the problem with making agreements <laughs> is we have to communicate, <laughs> as silly as that sounds. But the thing is, what happens is men generally are more literal. So exact information helps us be, be, be effective because we like specificity. That's a masculine thing. The feminine is more amorphous and more um, inclusive and more flowing. So an agreement can be much more fluid for the feminine, which for men is, is drives us insane, to be, simple, to be simply put. So imagine this. When a man makes agreement with a woman, he wants to put together a very succinct, matter-of-fact, clearly defined, um, fully explained agreement on how to do something or what to do or do something by a certain point. The feminine, which is a more of a flowing experience, takes that agreement and has it in a place that is interconnected with everything else and will get done at some point. Women, I'm not saying are bad agreements, it's just that women don't handle agreements the same way that men do, generally speaking. And I'm, and I'm overlaying masculine and feminine on men and women in this context because it generally lines up in this conversation. When we make agreements with men, there's a certain thing which is interesting. When women, women, when women, excuse me, when women make agreements with men, in that flow, it's, how does it feel? What I feel in that for women when they're in that place is they feel it as a, almost like the uh, princess and the pea, if you know that old old uh, fairy tale about the woman, about the princess who could feel a pea under the mattress, doesn't matter how many mattresses were put on top, that was how they knew she was a princess. But it's kind of that nagging little thing that's going to keep itching. When women agree with a man, when a woman makes agreement with a man, excuse me, 
and she is asking for something to be done as much as she's in a flow she gets caught on this hook because in her mind when she puts out the risk for, need for agreement from a man it's in this moment it's very much in the very moment it's made even though he may think which is quite linear that he'll get to in the next few days now this isn't conscious this is all coming under the radar and what happens is that I mean there's, there's an old um, meme that's going around a joke I guess going around on, on it's been around on Facebook as well about um, a man talking to his wife something lines of um, I know you asked me to do this thing whatever it was and it's been six months it's like you have to keep reminding me every single day I know I'm going to do it I'll get round to it so the thing about it is there's a difference in time scales between men and women that was a bad analogy by the way and I didn't I didn't do the meme justice either but the, the point I want to make badly <laughs> is that when men and women when it comes to agreements have different time frames a man's going to have a task to bit things done but because we are linear beings and we do things in a very effective sequential style if you want some, some, us to do something and you need it done right now tell us you need it right now because it means we'll have to because what will happen is we will rearrange a whole sequence of things we're doing like a whole like a traffic jam in a way that we have to move all the cars back to fit yours in front that sounds chaotic which it is a kind of thing for us because what happens for us is if you ask us to do something we'll put it in the back of the queue because we have other things we've already got on our agenda now if we have nothing on our, on our agenda then fine we'll do it right away but as men we tend to have we, t we like to have a linear process of things that are planned ahead that's generally how we work as masculine men now some men don't do that but masculine energy is linear it is sequential it is um, directed and for that it needs things to be sequential it's much easier for us to do things when we have A then B then C then D you come along with Z and want to put it in the front it's kind of like whoa, whoa hang on a second that messes up everything we planned so ladies and gents have challenges communicating needs have challenges in communicating agreements and have challenges understanding timelines and you wonder why relationships are challenging <laughs> and that's another piece by the way is that in that sequencing there is a a distinct um, how do I say this there's a distinct challenge with referencing and understanding each other because we are so different the time frames we work under again are very different which is one another reason why when a man asks a woman how long it should be so she'll, she'll say five minutes but it takes 30 minutes to get ready one because she doesn't because most women are not major time tracking people and be careful I say that and ladies you know who you are so the joke the, the joke kind of thing is is when and again this is one of these bad memes is about to a woman when, when a man asks a woman how long she's going to be and she says five minutes it's going to be half an hour when a woman asks a man how long it's going to be he says it's going to be half an hour it'll be five minutes there's a difference there's a difference in scale and, and there's a, again I'm really butchering my memes today so I apologize for not having clear explanations but the reality is our time schedules are different again for us as men having a sequential sequence of things to do is easier for us to plan for than trying to juggle three or four things at once and that's a masculine trait our strength is to focus on one thing at a time so that's why when we're watching TV we won't hear a word you're saying just not against you just so we can only focus on one thing at once so ladies when you have a man in your life and you're in a relationship and you're on your feminine he's in his masculine and he's watching TV you are competing against something that is totally taking up its whole attention he won't be able to focus on you so to get his attention I don't recommend you turn the TV off but however I do recommend you ask him in a break when he's not focused like during a commercial is when you get to break can we talk that puts it in his radar as a sequence thing behind what he's watching again that sequential flow so it gives you more opportunity to communicate in a way where you can be understood and heard excuse me heard first maybe understood because again we have understanding differences and then you can work things out now my recommendation because of what I just said is that ladies and gents when you're in conversation about agreements be really clear defining them for each other as I said when a woman asks a man to do something she will generally not give him a time frame because her assumption is you'll do it right now the ladies do that so the men when they're doing things will put it in their calendar or in their timeline so to speak not necessarily a physical calendar but in their mental calendar about well I've got these three things to do first I'll get around to it then or 
which is something men do as well, you say, okay, well, I'll go do that this day. I'll put that together with it. So you may combine activities in the same moment because it's easier for us to do that. We can plan that far ahead, but again, we're going to do one thing at a time. If you give us a priority, it must be done sooner, then we have to rearrange some things in our, in our mind of planning so we can do it. But don't assume it's going to happen every time. So I hope this makes some sense. It sound, sounds simplistic, but I'm, I am passionate about agreement keeping as well. I want to make this point. So let me just make this part of agreement keeping. Because this piece has been all about the communication and the lack of understanding how we communicate our agreements with each other, men and women. But let me take it to an, a, a higher level about agreements in general. Agreement keeping is a vital skill for us as people, period, men and women. Keeping our agreements is fundamental to our self-esteem. In fact, if we don't keep our agreements, we can't trust ourselves. And other people can't trust us either. When you break your agreements, you become untrustworthy. And it's nothing to do with worth, it's just being trustable. So if you are someone who is wanting to have more self-worth, self-support, keep your agreements. Write them down, make them, make them serious, make them clear, and you keep every single one of them. Now, if you've got too many agreements, that's why you don't keep them all, delete the agreements, renegotiate some of them, say you won't do those things, so you can have a defined and a finite number of agreements you can keep, and then you start building up your own self-support. This is part of my course, by the way, which I'll put, I'll, I'll put a link in the comments. I'll tell you that in a moment. So keeping agreements is vital. If you're someone who is keeping your agreements um, easily, awesome. If you don't make any agreements, that may not be a way of getting, getting by with that one. But if you make too many agreements, it's going to be hard to keep them all. So again, keeping agreements in a finite amount really works. And having an understanding of how men and women don't communicate well will help you understand how agreements, because they're important, should be clearly defined so they can be kept. So I hope these two things have come together to help you with some understanding. Again, I'll put a link in the comments for the replay of yesterday's broadcast about why we don't understand each other, which is part of this. And this is on top of that about how we don't understand each other's agreement keeping and don't understand how we are being asked to do things we don't agree to. Dangerous territories, walking on eggshells, it can be really changing, challenging. So this has made sense to you. Um, I did mention about my course, because this thing about keeping agreements is a vital part of self-support, self-esteem, and self-integrity, because then people will trust you when you keep your agreements. That's why it's one of the fundamental teachings in my new group course, which I've not talked about for a few days, but I'll put the link in the comments, called Coming Home to Yourself. It's a um, course for, for people. Um, the first one's going to be pay what you want, but it's going to go up straight after that. So if you want to get in, get in now. It's starting very shortly. I'm going to keep it limited to a small size group. And it's going to be what is a multi, it's actually over a dozen different teaching points about self-support and self-practices that really help you build up your own integrity, support, confidence, amongst other things. The link will be in the comments for you to check it out. Um, and you can apply there. There's a link in there to, get, to apply to have a chat with me first. That, and also if you want to get some help about understanding yourself in relationship, I'll put a link in the comments for um, a chat with me, a, conf a, a um, complimentary, dis complimentary discovery session so we can talk. That, I think, is that. If you have any questions or thoughts about this, if it's provoking, like, oh, my God, I understand this part, or you have a question, or you go, oh, I understand this, feel free to put that down below, and I'll respond when I sign off. If you're watching this on YouTube, on Facebook, either way it works. And again, sorry, I didn't say this again for the first time. This is my daily Facebook Live, by the way. I do this every day on my personal page on facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. The replay is gone to my business page, which is Barry Selby dot, sorry, Barry Selby dot author. And you can like my page. I appreciate that. And also put them onto YouTube for backup, and you can watch them there more easily sometimes. My channel on YouTube is Barry Selby. Please subscribe. And then there's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. That, I think, covers everything. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page, as I mentioned. Um, you can join me tomorrow at the same time, 5 p.m. Pacific time, and we can go into deeper topics. I'll have a few things to talk about tomorrow. I don't know what they are yet, but I'll know what it is by then. And uh, if you want help, reach out to me. Again, I'll put a link in the comments for coming home to yourself and for a discovery session with me. With that, I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow with, for more... Uh, juicy stuff about relationships. I'm sure you'll be willing to join, you'll join me then and have some fun. Well, education, maybe some fun as well. With that, I thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow. Take care of yourself. Bye.